Before we look at a note receivable asset that may be impaired, I figured we would look at a scenario where a note is received in exchange for property, goods, or services. That's what the PGS stands for, or other assets. And near the end, we'll also look at the concept of imputation. So without further ado, let's look at our example. In this example, we are an executive at Tesla Motors and we're selling a plot of land that is used to store cars. So essentially it's a parking lot. You can see it's right underneath the car and uh, very conveniently this person has decided to park on two parking spots, thinking that they're super important, but they're not. And on our books, uh, the cost of this plot of land is $600,000 and that's also its fair value. And we're trading it for a four year $1 million notes. And I should also say that I have here that the market rate is 13.62%. So market rate is equal to that. I forgot to give you that as a given. And while we write out these journal entries, I figured I would also provide a flow chart to make this much uh, easier and so that you can kind of just work your way down it. So to start off, do we know the market rate? In this case, we definitely do know the market rate or the effective rate, uh, so we can discount and find the present value if we want. So if we were to take the, the face value of $1 million and divide it by 1.1362, which is the rate, uh, to the power of four, because that's four terms, we're gonna get a present value, which is very similar to the $600,000 cost. So since the, the cost is a much more reliable figure, we might as well uh, use that. And we also have to use it to de-recognize that amount on our books. So to report the note, we would debit note receivable, and we would credit, credit the, what am I crediting here? I'm crediting land, I just kind of tunnel vision there for a second. Uh, land is on our books for $600,000, so we must de-recognize it by 600,000 and we would also recognize the note at the cost of giving up that land. And then there's that optional method for using or reporting a note receivable by using a contra asset account. So we would have note receivable, and then we'd also have discount on note receivable, and then we would have land. So land is the easiest one. Uh, we know that we're giving up 600,000, and since the note receivable at face value is 1 million, and we're reporting the note receivable at cost, or actually I should say we're reporting it, uh, well, it, it's not realizable value will be 600,000, but uh, we'll have note receivable at 1 million, and then the discount will be 400,000. Therefore, the net realizable value of note receivable will be the same as the first one is 600,000 because these two uh, will offset each other. Now let's change something up. So I'm gonna get rid of this. And let's say that, what if we take the land and the cost is changed from 600,000 to 580,000 and the fair value is actually going to stay the same at $600,000. What is going to happen? Well, we're gonna still have a note receivable and we're still going to have land but the land cannot be derecognized from our books at 600,000 because the balance is the cost. It is 580,000, so we must credit it for 580,000. But the note, we know that the note uh, is worth $600,000 by present valuing uh, the cash flows. So we need to report something else and that's going to be a gain since the land has appreciated uh, looking at our our discounted cash flows using the effective rates, and that's going to be for twenty thousand dollars. And you can also do it using the contra asset account. And I'm just going to quickly write it down: discount on note receivable, uh, land, and then the gain. And it would just look like this with one million as the gross amount. The discount is going to be four hundred thousand land is going to be derecognized at its cost and then the gain which is 20,000. So that was just the first row on the on the flow chart that we have right here. Now 
what if we move down to the second rate? What if we do not know the rate or the market or effective rates? Well, let's get rid of this first and say that we do not know the market rate. And I'm also actually gonna change the, the cost. So instead of $580,000, I don't know why that is not working, 508, could not use the clone stamp because the area to clone, oh, I'm using, you know, I had my clone stamp on for some reason. Okay, so instead of the cost being 580,000, actually I'm just going to erase this, it is going to be 300, so the cost and the fair value is both 300,000. The cost and the fair value is not the same thing. I'm just saying that they both are 300,000. Uh, and in this case, we know that the, the face value is 1 million. The term is four years. So we can calculate the market rate using manipulation. And then we're going to use the single sum formula, so future value is equal to present value times one plus r to the power of t, and the future value is going to be one million. The present value is 300,000, since the fair value uh, essentially translates to its discounted value, and we're going to have one plus r, the rate is going to be unknown, while the four will be known. And since we just have one unknown, we can solve for this. So we're going to divide the left side by 300,000, start manipulating it. We're going to be left with 3.33 repeating is equal to 1 plus r to the power of 4. Get rid of the exponent 4 by uh, 4 rooting the 3.33 repeating. And that's going to give us, I should actually have this written down, but I don't. Let me just quickly calculate it. Uh, it's going to be 1.3512, essentially. So we're going to have 1.3512 is equal to 1 plus r, and then we get rid of the 1, and then we're just left with r is equal to 0.3512. So 0.3512 is the same as 35.12. So let's get rid of all of that and write our market rate up at the top, 35.12%. So the market rate is 35.12%, and that is going to be the rate at which you amortize the discount at. So once again, we'll report our note receivable, and also the land. So the land has to be de-recognized at $300,000. And the note receivable will be issued at $300,000. And then the discounts will be amortized. And to make it much more clear, you can also use that contrast account, like I said, discount on note receivable, and then land being credited. The land is straightforward. We're derecognizing $300,000. The discount in this case is $700,000 because it's increased since our cost or fair value is much lower. And then note receivable is at its gross amount, which is 1 million. And then once again, these will offset each other so that the net note realizable or the note uh, receivable amount will yield 300,000, which is uh, its amount stated there. Now, the last part I wanted to talk about is just the imputation or the imputed interest rate. So uh, looking at this example, let's continue with the $300,000 cost fair value of the land. So in this case, if we're giving up this, this piece of land, this boxed in amount to this person and we're receiving a note in exchange. So actually I should do it the other way around. We're giving up the land. So we're giving them the land and they're giving us that note, uh, we're essentially conducting a financing deal because we're receiving just a note. It's not really, it's a promise to pay a certain amount at a later date, the $1 million. So we're financing them essentially. We're financing them $300,000 because that's how much our land is worth. So in order to find the imputed interest rate, we would have to look at certain factors to determine that. So we would look at similar rates in the marketplace as to how much 
other uh, lenders are loaning $300,000 at, we would have to look at maybe the payment schedule or the, the interest payments. In this case, we don't have any interest coupons. It's just a zero discounted uh, or a zero discount note. There's no uh, coupons being paid. And if there are coupons, then that will affect its, uh, its uh, market rates or its effective rates. And the collateral, collateral also reduces uh, risk. So if they offer us a certain amount of collateral uh, with the $300,000 notes, then we might have a smaller market or effective rate. So all of these different factors uh, taken into account can determine our imputed interest rate. And the imputed interest rate is going to be used uh, to, to find our our future value because we're lending out 300,000 and depending on the rates, the rates will be left with the future value is equal to the present value, which is that 300,000 and then the one plus the imputed rate to the power of four. So once we uh, decide that imputed interest rate, it's going to yield us a certain future value. Hopefully that wasn't too confusing. Uh, let's look at impairment of note receivables and I'm going to save that for the next tutorial because I've been talking for way too long. See you guys in the next one. Hope you enjoyed it.